WGCA. Hi, we're cutting in really quickly here. Obviously, we have a bit of an emergency situation developing. Just want to warn people about it without panicking them. We have a, uh, a tornado moving in towards southeast Edmonton, apparently. It has been sighted by the weather office. It is quite large. They believe it will miss Edmonton, but is headed towards Sherwood Park. And that is the warning. Bill Douglas has been talking with the people at the weather office. And what's the latest, Bill, from Nick Fadina? Uh, the latest from Nick is that they have spotted a very large tornado that was heading directly toward Edmonton. He says, however, it will miss Edmonton proper, but it could touch Sherwood Park. And that basically is as much as we know at this moment. Uh, the weather officials are tracking it. We will try and stay in touch with them as closely as we possibly can, although, of course, they're obviously very busy right now. And uh, we will try and keep you informed. Again, we encourage people not to get overly upset or overly excited about this. It is being tracked. Apparently, it will not hit the city proper. Again, there has been a large tornado sighted in the southeast quadrant of the Edmonton area, but should miss the city proper. This has been a bulletin from CJCA News. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just am never cease to be amazed at the cooperation that you find. It's so exciting for a stranger to drop into a radio station and find out how people help and work together when something like this happens. Brian Hall in handling uh, the news. People are working together. You've been listening to Dr. John Patterson with uh, Paul, Dr. Paul Otke and Jamie Patterson on That's Living. Stay tuned to Gordon Glenn. Right now, Ken Davis is going to update us on the uh, possibility of the tornado. Stay tuned, and we'll be bringing you up-to-date reports. For the best adult music, up-to-the-minute news and sports, and most of all, lots of fun, it's Dwayne Granboys. Weeknights at 6.30 on the Information Station, 9.30 CJCA. All right, it's now 3.30 from the CJCA newsroom. We bring you a news update, and of course, the uh, top story during this update will indeed be the fact that a large tornado has been sighted in the immediate Edmonton area. Uh, the weather conditions obviously here over the city right now is torrential rain. The wind is picking up. Now, the weather office has sighted the tornado. It touched down apparently uh, not far from Leduc, in around the Leduc beaumont area. Uh, we've just been uh, uh, listening to the uh, police reports, and that tornado has stayed on the ground. It is traveling towards Sherwood Park. All we know is that the weather office that has been tracking it reports it's a quite large cell. Uh, we've also heard reports from residents in the Mill Woods area telling us that they have seen uh, very large hail has been falling on Mill Woods. And, of course, that uh, can always be quite damaging as well. We're not exactly sure as to the extent of the damage or the ferocity of the hail that is falling at this point in time. I believe we now have that material ready from the weather office, and we'll play it for you now. It appears there are several sightings of more than one tornado in the area. They seem to be east of 50th Street, moving northeastward, and it's in, into and into the wreck to the line of Sherwood Park. You are listening to 930 CJCA News. The time now is 3.30. Well, listen, Ken, I thought it might be an idea to uh, try to hook up with our resident weather expert, of course, Bill Matheson, co-host of the 11 to 2 show. And a lot of our listeners, I'm sure, are aware of the fact that Matty is also the uh, weatherman out at ITV. You with us, Bill? Yeah, I'm right here. Okay, listen, uh, I have been involved in an area where a tornado has struck down before, but it's it's very rare that it happens in this part of the world, is it not? For tornadoes, you have to have hot, moist air on the ground and very cold air aloft. And we usually get a lot of cold air aloft, but we don't get the hot, moist air. But everybody's been considering how muggy it is. You know, they don't feel good 55%, 60% relative humidity and all this stuff. And then, of course, we do have a cold front aloft, which is coming in. So we have those two ingredients, which are snapping these tornadoes off over in Mill Woods area or down into there. As a matter of fact, I got a call from my um, stepson over there, and he tells me they got a bunch of hailstones that were the size of baseballs, not softballs, but baseballs. Is and that a fact? That happens when you get a whole bunch of hailstones and they all stick together. Well, we've had no report, as Ken just mentioned on the news a moment ago, about damages, but I see Bill Douglas is standing by. Bill, have you something further to add to this? Still no word about serious damage, but the weather office just sent out another bulletin saying that a tornado has touched down briefly in Mill Woods at least three times and appears to be heading towards Sherwood Park, but no word about damage at the moment. What's the weather look like where you are right now, Matty? You're over, what, roughly in the Calder area of the yeah, city. I'm are you getting this torrential? rain like I can barely see Jasper the area the buildings along Jasper Avenue out our windows here now no, it's raining that hard it's coming down at a good clip but as a weather observer I'd have to call it moderate rain it's not become 
heavy rain yet. You're not getting as much as we are because it is hailing in the downtown area right now. Uh, well, I'll tell you one thing. Our water supply has gone. Your water supply yeah, is gone. Yeah, turned on the tap, no water. Isn't that interesting? Oh, well, I want to drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> now, just and to, you know... There's water coming out of our tap. I know you explained there what, what causes a tornado. Just run through that again so that everybody has an understanding because, you know, we're going to be deluged with calls. The phones are ringing yeah. off the wall. People are obviously very concerned because we have, uh, you know, for instance, when you watch television news reports of tornado action in the central yeah. United States, they can be deadly in their in their patterns. Um, we don't know, as we say, any reports of damage. We certainly don't want to panic anybody. No. Uh, well, but it, this is a collision of, of, of two bands of air rising against each other. It's two bands of air. To make it as simple as possible, you got to have a hot, moist air supply on the ground. That's something we usually don't get in Canada, or at least on the western prairies. It's got to be hot and moist. And we've had hot, moist air for a long time. And now we have an upper cold front coming through. And it's that violent meeting of the hot, moist air rising up and hitting that very cold air, which imparts a very violent twist as these two air masses try to, you know, meld with each other. And that twist comes right down out of the cloud and is what we call a tornado. Now, under normal circumstances, Oklahoma and uh, Missouri and up around and through there, where you have the hot, moist air coming from the Gulf of Alaska, then the cooler air coming in from Canada at high levels, that's where you get practically all your tornadoes. And that's, that's what apparently is happening here. Everybody's been complaining about hot, how hot and muggy it is. And now, uh, it was on the weather map the other day that there was a cold, upper cold front coming through, and I guess this is the way it's happened. Well, just to describe to you, uh, Bill, I know that uh, you are a great constitutional walker at lunchtime. I can just barely discern Hillsborough Place, which is on the corner of 109th Street mm. and 2nd Avenue, which is less than a block away from our studios. Yeah. I can barely make it out. There is vicious lightning in the area right now, yeah. too. You know, I just wanted to call and, and get a technical explanation of what this storm is all about from somebody who has a little bit of knowledge of it. I'm sorry to bother you at home, and oh, I know no, you'll that's be... That, that's uh, quite all right, because I was still pounding on the taps trying to get some water. <laughs> go outside and water. go outside and open your mouth, <laughs> man. <laughs> I know you'll be gearing up for a trip out to ITV, and uh, we hope that you have a safe voyage, because this looks like it's a pretty wicked afternoon yeah, out there. Yeah, it does look bad. We'll cross our fingers. Bill, thanks for chatting with us. It's been a pleasure, Gordon. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Bill Matheson, uh, co-host of the 11 to 2 show, and of course, uh, resident weather man out of ITV. We will uh, keep you apprised as best we can. Our information services go onto overload at this time and uh, perhaps if anybody out there who's listening is uh, in any of those involved areas, if you could maybe give us a call, we'd certainly appreciate uh, hearing some first-hand reports of just what the damage situation is. There's a big flyer out from Woodward's this week. 88 cents a pound at Woodward's Food Floor. It is 20 minutes away from 4 o'clock at 9.30 CJCA. Uh, I just uh, beckoned Rick Lewis to the call here. Phones are ringing off the wall and I, I had made a request to our listeners to uh, perhaps if they have any first-hand and uh, reports of what's going on out there. Maybe if you would be kind enough, if you have the time to slide in next door and, and answer some phone calls here, and we could uh, maybe have a chat with the folks. So if anybody has uh, information uh, of a first-hand nature, we would certainly appreciate hearing from it here at 930 CJCA. Of course, our phone number is 421-8255. Discount Jim's Furniture Clearance Center is very Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6, and Sunday, noon to 6 p.m. at 120th Street and 107th Avenue. It is uh, 19 minutes away from 4 o'clock on the information station, 930 CJCA. Once again, uh, severe weather systems hitting the Edmonton area right now. Uh, for those of you who are perhaps heading towards the city, it might be well advised if you are approaching uh, from Highway 16, coming from the Saskatchewan area along the Yellowhead towards Edmonton, you might want to find some place to kind of just sit back and take it easy for a bit because that would appear to be the direction that the storm is tracking. Uh, touching down in the Beaumont area, which is just south and a little bit east of the city of Edmonton, coming through Mill Woods, which is the southeastern suburb, of course, of the city, and it appears to be tracking northeastward. So we would advise that uh, if you have a chance to kind of lay low and stay clear of the system, that would be the best plan, of course. Ken Davis will be along with a look at news, uh, an update at 4 o'clock. And we will keep you informed throughout the afternoon as it becomes necessary here at the information station, 930 CJCA. Brian Hall just walked in. We were chatting about this yesterday, Halsey. When I got home last night, I don't know if you happened to see that cloud. Yes, I did. It came through from the southwest. It was absolutely frightening. Uh, sure I did, because I live right down on the river valley. I face on the river valley downtown, and I watched it come in. 
from the southwest section and move right across, much as this one did today. It's extremely heavy out there right now. You know, the way our station is uh, constructed, we have a uh, skylight, a skylight all the way down the center hall. And as you walk down our center hall, you can hear pound, 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 like somebody's beating on a timpani drum because of the hail that's hitting that glass up above, which uh, I believe is unbreakable glass, fortunately. I hope so. You know, it's so wide in the gutters and everything downtown, I can well imagine that areas like the Rat Hole and other places are, you know, going to be reported as being problem areas. 101st Street underpass and such, yes. I sure, any of so. those places. They're normally the first places to get it, you know, and now you can see great uh, happenings of lightning out our window here from our main studio. We can see a lot of lightning is now taking place uh, here in the downtown area, so it's uh, it's just bad throughout generally the area. Of course, the people that you mentioned uh, over by Mill Woods and uh, south of Sherwood Park and in that sector of our, our province are probably getting it a lot more than we are here. We have had, of course, the the funnel causes the tornadoes touching down in areas and they've stayed on the ground and that's when they are their most destructive is when they when they're skipping along they can be selectively damaging but when they decide to stay down on the ground uh, they can wreak havoc in, in any area that's there's affected. something else as we look out too and we see the uh, trees nearby that uh, you know there there is certainly movement in the trees but it's not bending them over or anything like that so we don't have a lot of wind downtown but we will keep you informed I see our newsroom uh, in maximum overdrive right now uh, trying to gather information from witnesses to the storm of course from the people at environment Canada, I can imagine the observers out there have more than their hands full. We will uh, pass along any pertinent information as it becomes available to you here this afternoon on the Gordon Glenn Show. Then stock up now. It is 14 minutes away from 4 o'clock at 9.30 CJCA. To recap, anybody who might be joining us just now, uh, it is reported that a tornado did touch down in the area of Beaumont, which for anyone who is uh, not familiar is just southeast of Edmonton. We have also had reports of the tornado touching down in the Mill Woods area, which of course is a suburb in the southeastern part of the city. It is reported to be tracking to the northeast, and there was some mention of the fact that it could be heading towards Sherwood Park and obviously points beyond that. Now, we have no further uh, verification of indeed that being the case. We have also had reports of hail the size of baseballs, which of course would give us what? Perhaps uh, three inches in diameter, something in that area. Now, Rick Lewis has joined me here this afternoon, has been uh, answering phones in there. Rick, you've obviously had a chance to uh, talk to some of the people who have uh, been affected by this. What are we hearing? Well, all kinds of things, Gord. The uh, interesting call that I had this afternoon was uh, from a gentleman who lives in Sherwood Park. And apparently, he could see the storm tracking down Refinery Row. And um, he feels that Sherwood Park will be missed by the track of the tornado and by the storm. And that transformers were popping as the storm went along, but it was tracking down Refinery Row and should head out to unpopulated areas. Well, we just have on the phone with us right now, Rick. We could uh, maybe make all the necessary connections here and say good afternoon to our news uh, director, Joe Myers, who lives out in the Beverly area of the city. Is that correct, Joe? That's right. I'm right on the edge of Rundle Park. Uh, we actually... Uh, uh, we have two to three people in the house at the moment, Grandpa and a house guest and myself. We took no chances. We headed for the basement in a safe place because this thing looked like it was going to go right over us. Fortunately, it went along the river valley. It approached us going through Refinery Row. It is headed off now along Highway 16 to the east and slightly north of us. It's raining very, very heavily here. We had a very light hail about 10 minutes ago, just the odd hail interspersed with the rain, and suddenly it hit. We could see it coming. We were ready for it. Let's hope that everyone Okay. 11 minutes away from 4 o'clock, our news director, Joe Myers. I seem to remember reading some literature on uh, what to do the procedure in a tornado is to head to the corner of the basement from which the storm is approaching and stay there. The other thing I think is mentioned is to keep your windows open. I know that sounds very silly with winds blowing the way they are in the rain, but if your house is sealed up, you get the explosive uh, package of the winds of the tornado. If the air has a chance to move through the structure, it's not nearly as destructive. We uh, are, of course... Uh, in contact with the folks at Environment Canada in our news department this afternoon. Any further updates to that? Of course, Ken Davis is around with a newscast here in just about eight minutes from right now at 9.30 CJCA. Every Sunday morning at 11.15, 9.30 CJCA presents Entertainment Week. Wherever the stars are, that's where you'll find Entertainment Week. Every Sunday morning, 11.15 on the Information Station, 9.30 CJCA. 
with your entertainment and information station, 930 CJCA. Five minutes away from 4 o'clock on the Gordon Glenn Show, 930 CJCA. We have been joined this afternoon by program manager Bob Lang, who has taken to the telephone, and we appreciate the help this afternoon. It's Eskimo's in 1987. Tomorrow night, the Eskimos and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Free game at 520. Kickoff at 6 on the voice of the Eskimos, 930 CJCA. <laughs> CJCA News to 4. I'm Ken Davis. Of course, there is torrential rain falling in some parts of the city. It's dying out in others, but the story is the weather this hour, quite obviously. And we will try and bring you up to date on all of the current circumstances around Edmonton as we currently know of them officially. Tornadoes touched down in southeast Edmonton during the past hour. A very large tornado was among those that touched down in the southeast quadrant. Touched down twice, apparently in Mill Woods. It also touched down in Beaumont. It was headed towards Sherwood Park. We believe it did not hit Sherwood Park, but may have touched down in the Refinery Row area. This was a, a massive a storm cell that came out of the Pinocchio region and swept at remarkable speed directly toward the Edmonton area, uh, giving very little warning and very little time to anybody. Edmonton police tell us that at least three cars were tossed right in the air and overturned when the tornado touched down in Mill Woods. Uh, there are injuries. It's not known how serious they are. Also in that same area, a semi-trailer truck was overturned. Uh, that was at 12th Avenue and 37th Street, and it is blocking that intersection. In fact, there are quite a few intersections, and people may, might be well advised for a while just to simply try and not travel. We had one lady who lives south of the Bonnie Dune Shopping Center. Right now in her freezer, she has a hailstone that is nine inches across to give you some idea of the impact of that storm. This basically has been our news report. Uh, as you can understand, uh, for this uh, particular newscast, we will continue to get information as quickly as we can and try and keep you abreast of everything that is going on here in the city. Uh, this is a report from CJCA News. You're down to the information station, 930 CJCA, Friday afternoon on the Gordon Glenn Show. Obviously, we are going to keep an eye on this situation. Tornado reported touchdown in uh, the Beaumont area, Mill Woods, also out in northeastern parts of Edmonton. We will gather information as best we can this afternoon. I just had a call a short time ago from a lady who uh, was in the area of Leduc. This was during the 4 o'clock news break. The hail took out the windshield of their vehicle. That is the size of hailstones which have been reported to have fallen in various areas of the city. Now, we want to head back to the telephones. I understand on line two, we have a lady who's calling from the Clearview area. Is that correct, ma'am? Yes, that's right. Now, I, I understand, uh, according to the information which has been passed to me, that the storm has actually taken houses away? From my back window, there's three houses that are gone. All our fences here have been blown down, and these people live there the last row of houses and from what I can see from my back there's three houses that are leveled and whether there was people in them or not I don't know I certainly hope my husband said the fire department's here but um, their, their houses are gone I mean we we got hit by a tornado our roof is gone our upstairs is leaking it's like we've got water just pouring in this place now okay ma'am uh, now can you uh, give us a specific area that you it's like 19th street and 145th avenue 19th Street and 145th Avenue. Now, emergency crews are on the scene? Yeah, my husband said the fire trucks are there. Okay. Um, no fire or anything, but I'm talking about what you see on the news. When you see these tornadoes that have lifted houses away, they're gone. This oh. rubble. Hi, this is Daryl Vernon heading out this weekend in the 930 CJCA Weekend or Mobile. It is 4.30. You're dialed to the information station, 9.30 CJCA in Edmonton with an update on this afternoon's uh, severe storm. Here's Ken Davis. Thank you very much, Gord. Of course, we had that twister touchdown uh, first hitting in the... Uh well, it first hit around Leduc, and it moved up through Beaumont. It then uh, skipped down a few times in Mill Woods. Uh, swung up through Refinery Row, hit Sherwood Park quite heavily, we understand. Uh, moving then up through the northeastern part of Edmonton, and the Clairview area was again uh, rather savagely attacked by this gigantic tornado. Uh, we have one uh, uh, caller who I'll, I'll play some tape on in just a moment uh, that I talked to only moments ago, who ended up having the tornado run yards past him virtually and said the thing must be at least five or six hundred feet high. It was just a stunning thing to look at and also terrible in its magnitude. Um, there's no doubt that it's, it's created extensive chaos, damage. We fear there may even be some deaths before all is said and done. There certainly are injuries. Um, we know that there was uh, one business on 50th Street and the Sherwood Park free, uh, Freeway 
uh, that was leveled. The building was completely leveled, and police are even now trying to rush to the scene, and uh, as well as ambulance and fire officials to try and get there. Uh, we also uh, just have word uh, from Edmonton City Police that at 145th Avenue and 19th Street, uh, up in the Clearview area, that apparently three houses were severely uh, hit by the tornado, apparently virtually leveled. People may be trapped inside, and ambulance, fire, and police are again rushing to that location. One of the things I just want to say here is that obviously emergency officials are being taxed to the limit at this point in time. Uh, Joan Rossell is chairman of the Edmonton Ambulance Authority. They've declared a full alert. We have, we have called a major multi-casualty incident now. We've called in all, we've got all units and uh, we're calling in all available personnel. Does this mean there have been a lot of injuries and fatalities? Or we, just... we, have, we haven't any idea the total number of injuries. At the moment, we have news of 10 injuries and one critical. And uh, that is, we have our multi-purpose unit, which is the one which is our large bus, which we use in case of, of uh, incidents such as this, which we have out uh, by the uh, Sherwood Park and 50th Street, picking up the injuries that we know of. Uh, Ken, I just wanted to add something uh, to what you were mentioning about uh, the business which was destroyed. We have had reports. Uh, I'd passed you that information. It was in the vicinity of 50th Street and the Sherwood Park Freeway. Uh, Rick Lewis, in talking to somebody, has called in from the area of 25th Street and 76th Avenue. Apparently, another business there has been completely leveled. And police and emergency vehicles are not able to respond because of the traffic blockage. Uh, they are requesting anybody in the area of 76th Street west of 17th Street to please do your best to allow emergency vehicles through. It goes without saying that if it means putting your car in the ditch up to the roof in water to save somebody's life, that, that it should be done. I, I think it, it's not even too editorial or exaggerating the fact to say that we are obviously dealing with a major disaster here, and anybody who does not cooperate fully with emergency officials is really... Uh, well, it's, I think they're subject to arrest. Well, yes, and, and certainly we ask everyone to please get off the roads, especially if you see emergency vehicles coming, because they are desperately trying to get to locations that have been heavily hit by this tornado. What I saw was uh, I was driving on 50th Street, and uh, the, the tornado was touching down, and there was debris flying all over the place. It, the thing must have been about 500 feet tall. It was pitch black, and all the power or the uh, street lights were all down, and uh, uh, there was a couple of accidents on 50th Street uh, because people were not given the right of way crossing the street. We head back to our telephone lines. Understand we have a gentleman on the line from the Nisku area. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, uh, you tell us you can see another storm forming to the south? Yes, that's right. Um, I saw the first one right out my uh, uh, kitchen window here, and incidentally, I've got some wonderful pictures, uh, photographs of the first one. Um, what's happening now is uh, another one of uh, similar magnitude seems to be forming just to the east of me, and that would make it... Um, probably three or four, maybe five miles south of Beaumont at this time. Thank you for the call this afternoon, sir. Okay, bye. Right, bye-bye. If we issue a warning that another one of these systems is approaching, please heed our advice. Uh, the Meteorological Survey Environment Canada is keeping an eye on the situation. It would appear at this time another storm is forming southeast of the city. Uh, whether or not it's of the magnitude of the one which passed through here a short time ago, we do not know at this point, but we will keep you advised of the situation. Discount, Jim's. A new tornado alert just uh, came in. This tornado. Here, we've just yeah. gave you a microphone. Okay, give so. me a microphone. Yeah, here, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the tornado that went up East Edmonton is now moving toward Fort Saskatchewan. Okay. So all the people up in that area, be warned, be ready, be alert, obviously. All right. Panic. Now, there are also, as we told you earlier, new cells are forming. The tornado alert has been expanded right through the area southeast and southwest of Edmonton down to Rocky Mountain House and still in the Edmonton area. There's still a possibility of more tornadoes tonight. That doesn't mean they will form. It just means that there's a probability of it, uh, given the existing weather cell conditions that are, that are uh, showing up on radar right now. If you have the time, uh, get some windows open in the house so that the, uh, the air has a chance to move through. This, uh, this prevents, in many cases, the implosion of the structure so that it doesn't fold in on itself. The other thing to do is to head to the basement, to head to the corner of your basement, which is, uh, if you will, you're walking towards yeah. the storm so that the storm passes by you. Um, it's not to be trifled with, ladies and gentlemen. We have had reports this afternoon of absolutely massive destruction from this storm. And uh, you don't want to take this lightly. We've just had a couple of reports, Halsey, here that have just been handed to me. Another right. funnel has been sighted. 
It has, eh? Uh, yeah, in the, uh, the southwest area. So um, the tornado watch is still in effect. So if anybody is in the, uh, the southwestern vicinity, yep. um, it says here uh, another funnel forming moving southwest from the area uh, of, of southeast Edmonton. Mm -hmm. So now it's tracking across the other side of the city. Uh, we would advise, I don't know what areas to, to include in this. Uh, I have a street address of 76th Street and 93rd Avenue. Of course, Town & Country Satellite offers complete satellite systems. Brought to you by 930 CJCA. It is approaching 5 o'clock at your information station. Once again, we are on maximum alert here ourselves. It is 5 o'clock and you're dialed to 930 CJCA Radio in Edmonton. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ken Davis at uh, 5 o'clock for CJCA News, and this newscast, understandably, will be a complete update as we have it on conditions this hour in the city of Edmonton and surrounding area as a result of this afternoon's tornado. We'll try and set a context for you to start with, for those of you who perhaps haven't had a chance to listen to the radio before now. A uh, cell of tornadoes formed in the Pinocchio area. It was uh, quite intense. It moved far quicker than anyone, even the weather officials expected. It uh, hit uh, the beaumont Leduc area uh, before 4 o'clock this afternoon, skipped into Mill Woods a couple of times, went then along the Sherwood Park Freeway and up through the Refinery Row area. It then went... Uh, up through Clareview, so you can see it basically went straight north, right up the east side of the city of Edmonton, and then uh, at last report was headed off toward the Fort Saskatchewan region. It has created extensive damage. Uh, the hail and heavy rain that came along with it has certainly snarled traffic throughout the city. Uh, there are injuries. There, there are possibly quite a few injuries. We can't speak yet as to whether there are any fatalities. We don't have confirmation of that. We don't want people getting uh, upset or overly panicked at this point in time. Uh, but certainly it is serious. It's a major disaster, especially through the east end of the city. And uh, people are asked to stay out of the area and stay off the roads and assist emergency officials in doing their job right now, which is the most important, and that is getting to those who may be injured or trapped in the buildings that have been collapsed and containing fires which have broken out as a result of leaking gas lines. And that is becoming a problem, as it does in the wake of any disaster of this magnitude. I've only just got off the phone from Sherwood Park RCMP. Uh, the Sherwood Park area was particularly hit hard uh, by this tornado, but the principal area that was hit was that strip between Edmonton and Sherwood Park and the Refinery Row area and the Industrial area. That was an area that was very heavily hit. Refinery Row is totally sealed by police. No one's being allowed in. No one is being allowed out. There are indications that that tornado may have hit. That industrial area may have started some fires, some explosions, and they are doing everything they can to contain it uh, before it becomes any worse. What we will do now is, is talk to some of the different officials that are involved. We will review some of the areas of the city that have been affected. We will try and keep those of you who have not been able to get home yet uh, apprised of the areas that may have been touched uh, as we know them right now. The Sherwood Park Freeway area was particularly hard hit uh, in this tornado. Uh, the uh, area between 17th Street and 34th Street, we do have indications there have been quite a few injuries in that area, and police, fire, and ambulance are concentrating on the zone and trying to get attention to those who need it. Uh, we know that in a number of businesses, actually, as reports are now coming in, were leveled in and around the area of 50th Street and Sherwood Park Freeway, um, and uh, there were injuries. That's all we can tell you at this point. Sterling Crane, 50th Street and Sherwood Park Freeway, apparently was heavily damaged. Uh, Laidlaw Waste Disposal, Solar Turbines, and the CN Shop on 34th Street are all places that were heavily damaged, uh, as we understand it, by the tornado all along the Sherwood Park Freeway at 34th Street. Laidlaw Waste Disposal, Solar Turbines, and the CN Shop on 34th Street were among those businesses that were very heavily damaged by the tornado. And again, emergency officials are on the scene now trying to assist all of those who need it. Well, it also hit the uh, Clareview area, of course, in the northeast of the city uh, as it continued north. And uh, we have a number of areas there that were quite heavily affected. We understand that one area was 145th Avenue and 19th Street. Uh, we know that at least three houses apparently were destroyed. People may be trapped in the rubble. Ambulance, fire, and police are on the scene there. Uh, mobile parks in the city were, were affected. The Evergreen Mobile Park at 10th Street and 167th Avenue, uh, extensive damage. Apparently the report we have is that at least 100 uh, trailers in that mobile park were either damaged or overturned, and uh, people could be trapped in some of those units. And again, Edmonton City Police and emergency personnel are responding. 
the Oak Ridge Trailer Park in the southeast of the city, 17th Street and 63rd Avenue. A similar story there. Extensive damage to some of the trailers in the Oak Ridge Trailer Park. We will just indicate that the chairman of the Edmonton Ambulance Authority, Joan Russell, is being kept very busy this hour trying to coordinate a lot of the ambulance activity that's going on. We have called a major multi-casualty incident now. We've got all units and uh, we're calling in all available personnel. Does this mean there have been a lot of injuries and fatalities? Or we, we, have, we haven't any idea the total number of injuries. At the moment, we have news of 10 injuries and one critical. We have our multi-purpose unit, which is the one which is our large bus, which we use in case of incidents mm. such as this, which we have out uh, by the uh, Sherwood Park and 50th Street, picking up the injuries that we know of. We have heard earlier that there, uh, the tornado cell is moving still toward Fort Saskatchewan. We have also heard that new cells are forming south east of Edmonton, and folks, uh, we hope the best, and, and there may not be anything further tonight that's really serious, but the cells are there, the possibility is there of a tornado forming again. Ken, we just want to jump in here, uh, Rick Lewis, who is answering phones in our studio here. We have just received a call from the operations manager of the Strathcona Refinery. They apparently have extreme damage to the eastern end of the refinery, but it is under control, no fire, no injuries. We're very glad to hear that because uh, a lot of people have family that work in the refineries and apparently they are containing the damage there and there are no injuries, uh, nobody killed in the refinery area. That's tremendous news on the Strathcona refinery front. Bill Douglas, you're just having some new information for me. I think uh, just of interest, we have a, an eyewitness, George Shreves, who was working in the area of 34th Street and 76th Avenue uh, when that twister touched down earlier this afternoon and here's what George tells us. It was bad. Uh, fire transport, the building is flattened. Cars were thrown up against the building. Almost all the cars in the park lot are damaged. It was throwing metal and stuff coming from the south. Uh, we just whirling through the air there. Any injuries, sir? Uh, I took one girl to the hospital already with uh, just about half the arm like cut open. And I couldn't tell you about the rest of that power lines are down. And so if there any people driving out there, they should stay just away from there. I couldn't think of a better piece of advice for heaven's sake. Stay off the roads tonight. In the absence of a basement or shelter, families should go to a small room such as a closet or bathroom at the center of the house on the lowest floor. You want to put as many walls as possible between you and the outside. Don't bother opening windows to keep your house from exploding. Uh, that's a myth as far as we are concerned. Houses have enough natural openings to keep pressure from building up rapidly. They don't explode. If you open a window in the windward wall, and you never know which side that will be, you could make the situation worse. Okay, so a bit of advice. Certainly, try and put as much distance between yourself and the tornado as possible, which means get into the central core of the home as many walls as possible between you and the force of the tornado should it bear down on your home and of course get as low as possible too even though i realize that creates a risk of debris uh falling on you it's less than having the, the tornado sweep through when it's actually demolishing a home um, and i think it goes uh, to mention once again that uh, information you passed along from the red cross that they have opened an emergency shelter for anybody needing shelter and food if you still have a working telephone, the number is 423-2680. That's 423-2680, Red Cross Emergency Relief there. That is correct. And one thing I, I would point out right now, we are going to have massive injuries. And whenever you have massive injuries and massive trauma, you have a massive need for blood. Uh, we, I'm sure that there are going to be blood donor clinics set up on an emergency basis very quickly. Please stay tuned. Listen to uh, to what we have for you. And as soon as we can, we'll, we'll tell you where those are. And, and please, anybody who can give blood, uh, make sure you get out because it is going to be a difference between life and death for some people tonight. Today, Waterloo Mercury proudly presents the 20th anniversary special edition Cougar. It is 23 minutes after 5 o'clock at 9.30 CJCA, the information station on, uh, I guess we could call this tornado alert today. The watch is still in effect. Now, what that means is that there is still the possibility and the potential of further tornado formation. Halsey is now checking on it. Uh, they were even trying to fix a time frame. They said between 6 and 7 o'clock tonight, we had best be on full alert because it does appear that the atmospheric conditions are such that the possibility of another tornado is very real. So uh, keep your ears uh, to us because we will pass along that information now. Again, you should be outside keeping an eye on the sky. If you see the beginnings of a funnel cloud, try to get into a corner of the basement. We would also urge anybody who lives in, for instance, an apartment building to stand in a doorway. Uh, Bill Douglas, from our newsroom, you have something? 
Al Gore, just a moment ago, we were telling you about Clearview really, really being hit. In the meantime, I received a phone call, as I was saying, from Ken Balquill, and I've got Ken on tape telling us just what it was like out there. We've just driven through this most severe destruction area in Clearview. We live right in the area. Fire crews are on the scene doing what they can, but from the location of the old Belmont Drive-In, north along the Riverbank Road, uh, for at least three blocks, there's in excess of 20 homes, uh, homes in the 160,000 plus range that have literally been destroyed. There's uh, motor homes tipped over on their sides, there's garages laying out in the road. Uh, it's most, most beautiful houses looking over the River Valley in Clearview, uh, just literally destroyed. And uh, it, it's just the most, most sickening scene that, uh, that one could look at. And that's what it's like in Clearview at the moment. Thank you, Bill. And of course, another area that appears to have been very heavily damaged this afternoon is the area between about 50th Street and Sherwood Park. We understand there's been extensive damage in Sherwood Park as well. Uh, the area between the Baseline Road and Sherwood Park Freeway. We had a call. Rick Lewis is uh, with us in our studio this afternoon. Rick, that was the operations manager from the Strathcona Refinery. Yeah, the SO Refinery there. And he said that uh, uh, they had received extensive damage on the east side of the refinery. There were no injuries, no fires, and that things were under control. They were able to contain the damage so far. I just want to go to the telephone because this gentleman has been on hold since you gave us an update at 5 o'clock. Sir, are you still with us? Yes, sir. You uh, got involved in a rescue operation this afternoon. I understand. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? Yeah, uh, I work right across from uh, 80th Street and Yellowhead Trail, an underpass there. And a lot of people started forming, so I went down there and looked, and uh, there, was, there was a car with, all you could see was just the brake lights on. So uh, everybody standing around, I said, well, is anybody in there? He said, yeah, we think so, but nobody wanted to get wet. So I, I dove in the water, and I uh, swam out to the car, and I looked in the car, and um, there's just pitch black, and there's stuff floating around. I knocked on the window, shut open the door, which I couldn't, uh, the water was a real swift stream. And then somebody yelled, uh, anybody in there? I said, no, I can't see anybody, and I can't open the door. He said, well, go check the other side on the westbound lane. He said, there's another car there. So I, I looked over, and all I could see was a piece of the hood. So I swam over there, and I went and I checked, and all I could, I could feel around the windows, but uh, the windows were all closed. When I swam away from it, a gravel truck started coming, and I tried to wave him back. And I don't know if he ran on top of the car or if he hit the car, but now he's stuck underneath the, over, uh, underneath the underpass there. And now he's standing on the cab of his truck, and uh, if anybody doesn't get down to the boat, he's going to drown if the other storm comes in. Because when I got out of the water, the first car I went to that um, I went to look to see if I could help anybody, it was gone. The water was just right over it. And he, now this big truck, like I said, it's either hitting this car or, or, or right on top of it. He's going he's gonna to be gone pretty soon, too, because the water is just unbelievable under, underneath that overpass. It must be about 12 feet and rising. All right, sir, listen, we thank you for being as patient as you were on the air this afternoon and uh, our commendations to you for uh, for what you did. Okay, sir, and another thing is uh, I hope that somebody can get down to the boat because if we get another storm, that man is still sitting there or standing on the roof of his, his truck, and he's going to be gone. Well, I'm sure emergency response teams will uh, get there as soon as they can. They're doing their best this afternoon. Obviously, we've never had a situation like this to deal with. Once again, thank you for the call. And you're welcome, sir. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. 5.30 at 9.30 CJCA. We have had reports now uh, the Yellowhead Trail and the St. Albert Trail. That would be the overpass on St. Albert Trail and the Yellowhead. Apparently, there is five to six feet of water in that underpass right now. Uh, Rick, the other one was the Manning Freeway. I'm trying to think of where that would be. Manning Freeway and... and about uh, 137th Avenue. That's right, out in the northeast corner about of town. four to five feet of water gathered there. Ken Davis with us once again from 9.30 CJCA's news Room. Ken, what is the latest that you have? Okay, I have a couple of things I just want to pass on at this point in time. During a situation like this, it's very understandable that, that people want to try and get through to others and, and trying to reassure themselves. But one thing I want to stress, Edmonton Telephones has called us. They are getting a lot of calls from you about or, or people that are concerned that their phones are dead or they can't get through and all this kind of stuff. Look, the telephone system is on computer. When it massively overloads, it backs up your calls on a processor delay. It's not that your phone's dead necessarily. It's just that you won't get through until they clear the phone lines. And we can't clear the phone lines if you don't get off the phone. So unless it's an absolute emergency, unless you're worried about your children or your spouse and you've really got to make sure of this, 
get off the phone. There should be absolutely no frivolous phone calls tonight in the city. And I'm not kidding. This city is not in just a normal state tonight. And we ask every citizen to please try and cooperate by, uh, again, stay off the phone lines unless it's an emergency, unless you need to, or you're going to jam the entire city's phone system. And it's simply not good policy under these circumstances. The best thing for people to do is to keep an ear on the radio, and uh, we will try to coordinate information as quickly as possible. Again, don't call 9-11 unnecessarily either. I can't believe that, well, I suppose people get panicky and uh, that, you know, the people would want to be phoning and asking when the storm is going to end. And I, I, if I can just interject again at this point in time, I mean, having been a, a newsman for many years, I've seen how these things turn into worse disasters than they have to when people start not being responsible or not thinking. I don't care how curious you are tonight. Stay off the streets. Leave the area alone. Wait to see it on the evening news. Get off the roads. That's right, because people are out there trying to save lives and do their jobs, and uh, anybody who gets in the way is not helping that. Rick Lewis. And if you are on the streets and you come across an intersection where there are no lights, treat it as a four-way stop. Apparently some people have been just taking the right-of-way and zipping on through. No lights, four-way stop. That way you can get home quicker if you are on the roads right now, but Ken's advice certainly is good. Stay where you are. Call from 75 miles southeast of Edmonton. Heavy black clouds passed over, heading towards yep. the east side of the city. 24 minutes before 6 o'clock, we have of course, uh, throughout the next several hours, we'll be keeping you apprised of the situation, the disaster which has occurred in the city of Edmonton this afternoon. Uh, we head to our telephone lines once again, our cellular line. We have a listener on the phone right now. Where are you calling from? Uh, Devon. From Devon. What can you tell us, sir? Uh, all I'd like to tell you is there's another funnel cloud coming from uh, the Wapnam area and uh, another one coming from the Pigeon Lake area. And uh, we're a little afraid in Devon here. And if, if it looks like it is going to form, that we're going to shut the, the natural gas off uh, to the town here. All right. You obviously are somebody uh, connected in that capacity, are you? Yes, I'm the town foreman here. You're the town foreman. Okay. Uh, uh, once again, we want to make clear to anybody in that particular area, if you think that there is the possibility, and it does sound as if that does exist, of a funnel cloud approaching you, it is best to be outside your house watching for the formation of this cloud and then head to shelter in your basement. Or if you are in an apartment structure or a house that does not have a basement, stand in a doorway or in a closet. Get as much construction around you as you can from the storm. What's happening out there right now? Is it kind of calm? Yes, it is calm, but, uh, other than it's uh, really starting to cool off, and uh, I'd say we're probably about, uh, I don't know, 15 minutes at the most that she's going to hit. It's just black as you can get it in the west right now, west and uh, southwest. Let me ask you, sir, was there anything that happened out in that particular area earlier this afternoon? No, just uh, heavy rain and uh, some hail. Some hail. Yeah, we had a little bit of flooding, but uh, nothing serious. All right, listen, we appreciate the call this afternoon. Once again, to repeat your message, uh, should a funnel cloud appear in that particular area, you are going to shut off the natural gas to the town of Devon. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.